It is time, Avengers Infinity War is here. You've waited months, uh, and some, some of us have waited 10 years for this. We're getting now, finally, the MCU's ultimate big and baddest villain in Thanos. I think the one thing the Russo brothers took advantage of is the fact that we're already very familiar, even though there are a lot of heroes in here, you're already familiar with them, you know their stories, you know their backstories. So really a lot of time in the movie is spent focusing on Thanos, the one person we don't know that well. This is the first Marvel film in this universe where most of the people coming out of the theater are silent. Uh, this is much darker in tone, uh, much more intense. What we get is a two and a half hour film that uh, you get out of it and it is the first Marvel film I've come out of where people aren't cheering, there's, they're stunned. You know, this is also a good year to, to really reconsider and reorder one's MCU power rankings because we have three Marvel films in Black Panther, in Infinity War, in Ant-Man and the Wasp. But Thor Ragnarok for me is, is number five. Four, uh, right now, I put Infinity War. Uh, number three for me is Winter Soldier. Um, number two for me, it's almost 1A, is Black Panther. I think it's the most culturally relevant Marvel film. Number one for me is Iron Man. You never forget your first love. I'd have to start at five with Avengers, the original Avengers film in 2002. Uh, number four, I'm gonna go with the original Iron Man movie in 2008. Uh, number three, Avengers Infinity War, the movie I just saw. When, when you wait a decade for a movie and you like it, uh, it's going to have an impact on you. Number two is Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And number one for me is Black Panther. Uh, I got swept up in the cultural phenomenon and it delivered in ways that I wasn't expecting it to.